From the University of Alabama, Department of Theater and Dance, this is Stage Talks. I'm joined today with Sarah Thomas Easley, who's a BA musical theater student here at the Capstone. Sarah Thomas recently played Elle Woods in our production of Legally Blonde, the musical. Sarah Thomas, welcome to Stage Talk. <laughs> so glad you're here. I'm happy to be here. Yay. And I can't wait to talk about the most wonderful production that just closed, Legally Blonde, the musical. Congratulations on the run. Thank you. It was fabulous. You know, the public was literally going insane about this show. Yes. We, what we called super sold. So what actually happened was the complete run was sold out. Every ticket was sold. And then when the show was supposed to start, we would go in and count how many seats were empty and resell because there were people literally in lines out the building getting into the show. And that's such a testament to mm-hmm. you and your entire cast. So it was awesome. It was fabulous. I'm so excited to talk to you, Sarah Thomas, because you have such an interesting story <laughs> with Legally Blonde. Very. <laughs> For our audience members that don't know, Legally Blonde was originally going to be produced in our spring 2020 season. And it was in rehearsals. Yeah. It was almost to tech. Am we I right? Were like We were a week out from tech. It was right before spring break. And you were in that original production yes. in 2020. So who were you in 2020 and what was that kind of like? You so Legally that? Blonde was cast in 2020. It was going to be my first show at UA. I was a sophomore at the time. I was cast as Margot. She's the Delta Nu. She's the super fun, just quirky, mm-hmm. silly Delta Nu character. One of Elle's three best friends. And I was also cast as the understudy for Elle, which was, like, super fun and exciting because I was just a sophomore at the time. So I was mm-hmm. like, oh, my gosh, what a huge honor right? Um, to be cast in the first production, not only as, like, a lead supporting role, but also understudying one Elle of the Woods, biggest right. roles, like, in Broadway history. Yeah. yeah. That's bizarre. And so rehearsals were going. And then did you guys go on spring break and then you just never came back? Is that how it happened? So the week leading up to spring break is when things kind of started getting weird with COVID. Okay. It wasn't that people didn't believe in it, but we were like, what is this? It's right. not in the U.S. yet. Um, Stacy, the director, had told people there's a lot of kissing in the show, if mm-hmm. you saw it, um, had told them, like, let's not kiss. Mm-hmm. You know, masks weren't a thing then. And we That's were in, so funny. That's yeah. where we were. <laughs> don't kiss. Like, <laughs> we were like, maybe just not kiss. We don't want to, like, catch this little That's virus. really funny. Yeah. So then leading up to spring break, I guess it was, like, a Thursday or Friday. No one really knew if we were going to come back or not. Mm-hmm. So we had just done, like, a stumble through of Act 1. Had barely blocked most of Act 2. There were still, like, big chunks that we had to finish. But Stacy was like, let's just run the whole thing just in case and she filmed the whole entire thing and then spring break happened and then we never came back oh my so gosh. there was just like all of this unfinished business just like kind of left on the stage and left throughout the cast and it was mm-hmm. an emotional night because we were so unsure of the future and what would happen many tears were shed it was just very emotional and like some parts of it you were like oh that needs a lot of work it was really interesting and cool to get to do the whole show like one last time with that cast and then we came back in person for mm-hmm. 2020, 2021. Um, but Legally Blonde wasn't the musical. No. They ended up doing Spring Awakening. Right. So it didn't happen spring 2021. But then for this season, yes. Legally Blonde was on the season roster. Yes. <laughs> and <laughs> when did you guys have auditions for this production? Because you had to, and I don't know if people realize, everyone had to re-audition for yes. the show. So nothing was automatically carried over. Right. So you are now Elle Woods. Yes. So exciting. There were a few people who, from the 2020 production, got to be mm-hmm. recast in the 2022 mm-hmm. production. The girl who played Paulette, yes. she was cast again as yes. Paulette, which was fun. But a lot of people were new. Yes. New either to their track or new to the production mm-hmm. as an entire whole. So right. what was it like to restart that rehearsal process? It was interesting. I would say I definitely had a leg up just in the whole process because not only did I know the show super well, but I also remembered, like, a bunch of the choreography or, like, what was going to happen next. 
And it was really easy for me to, like, drop into character into Elle because I am so much like her. Right. Um, I have all pink on right Literally now all have pink. have a pink bag. That like, says Sarah Thomas on yes. it. It's literally perfect. No, and I have this, like, thing where I have to wear an item of pink every single day. Like, whether it's, like, my nails or something. I've literally been that way since I was, like, young, young, young. Um, designed for this role. Yeah. Literally. No, and everyone kept saying, like, you literally are Elle Woods. Like, even yeah. the cast, like, Elizabeth Harmon and Colby would be like, you are Elle Woods. Right. And I'd be like, yeah. Yeah, but that's <laughs> such a compliment in right. so many ways. But, so, I would definitely say I had a leg up, but it was really interesting to watch people figure out the show. Mm-hmm. Because, yes, it's like a fun, cheesy, like, just over-the-top musical, but there's so much, like, debt and, like, meaning in it. Yes. That once you, like, find that and you connect to, like, what even, what the characters are saying, there's, like, a beautiful message, like, underneath, Mm -hmm. like, so many messages that's just really cool to, like, witness. So watching, like, one by one, like, each person kind of figure it out was really fun. That's so great. Your leading man in the show, Colby, who played Emmett, he Mm -hmm. was not Emmett originally. No, he was the male swing. So and, awesome. And so awesome to work with. I was going to say, y'all's oh. chemistry, chemistry on stage right. was gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Well, so. and it was really fun because Colby and I were not close at all before the show. Like, mm. maybe a few words, like a hi right. here and there. And then we were, like, both in a class together last semester. And actually, the class happened at the same time the cast list came out. Okay. So me and him were, like, sitting there, like, sweating in class and we're like, can we please leave early? Like, can mm-hmm. we please leave early? So we're, like, walking over to Rojo, like, not together. I'm like, I don't want to be near anyone, mm-hmm. just in case. But, like, as soon as, like, the rehearsal started and stuff, like, the small talk. And then it was kind of fun because Emma and L aren't really friends at first. Right. So their friendship builds throughout the whole show. And so that's how me and Colby were, too. That's so lovely. And so it was awesome just to, like, get close with him and just like watch him like us find the relationship mm-hmm. that Ellen and Emmett have mm-hmm. so that's yeah. so fun mm-hmm. oh my god really well fun. it was lovely to watch on stage so okay. rehearsals are underway yes working it's a beast of a show and a beast of a role Sarah Thomas mm-hmm. so I told you at the talk back but I literally did this the final night of the show I'm so glad you did too. I played a game because <laughs> I swear Elle Woods in my humble opinion is the hardest female role in a musical literally it is so really hard. hard the vocal range is hard it sits kind of in a a weird a place, weird place. Mm-hmm. not only is she the ingenue she's also a character right she's also the dancer in the front of every piece so it's so yeah. much anyway so final night of the show i'm sitting in the back <laughs> and i decide to play a game with myself mm-hmm. i bring my phone and i start recording every time you were on stage as Elle. And I'm talking on stage, not behind changing. Like, you are actively yeah. on stage. You were on stage every bit of the entire show other than 13 minutes, which the show ran, like, two and a half hours. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how did you do it? How did you prepare for the role? How did you get your stamina up and the energy the whole time? Yeah. It doesn't stop. No, The it train doesn't. doesn't stop. So can you talk about how you prepared yeah. to do that and not be exhausted? Yes. So I remember from the 2020 production, we were doing a read through. Every time you set a line or you were singing, you stand up. And I remember me and one of my dear friends, Alex Freeman, he looked at me and was like, she has not sat down one time. Like, I've always remembered that. Mm-hmm. She never sat down. Like, what a character. Mm-hmm. You're doing something the whole time. Keep in mind, when she's not on stage, she's changing clothes. Literally changing. No, like, there's, there's never, no sin. <laughs> never in the dressing room. Yeah. The only time I was ever in the dressing room was during intermission, and mm-hmm. I was changing clothes. So, to prepare, I knew going into it, I was like, oh, gosh, I'm going to have to be in shape. Mm-hmm. I can't keep eating Chick-fil-A every day. Mm-hmm. I was like, something's going to have to change, or I'm not going to be able to make it through the show, or I'm going to have sweat stains everywhere. Right. Going into it... I started working out a lot. I mean, I was already doing dance and stuff, and I would say I'm pretty in shape. Mm-hmm. But I started running. I started going to mm-hmm. Orange Theory. like, And mm-hmm. I felt that that helped a lot with, like, the stress and anxiety mm-hmm. of, like, being like, you're about to carry this whole show on your back. Right. Whether you know it or not. Rehearsals underway. And then we jump into tech rehearsals, which yes. are insane. And let's dive into your costumes, which were designed by Cami Herbert, who did absolutely incredible Incredible. and you changed nearly every scene so what was tech like just figuring out 
all of those changes and the set, all mm-hmm. the things. So I had seen some of the costumes before, but we were literally working on costumes until like opening night. Really? Yes. The what you want costume like was not completely done until opening night. Wow. Yes. So I knew that I was going to be changing. I just didn't really know like which outfit was going to go where, like especially right. regarding like the Harvard scenes. Like I knew I had like this plaid skirt and I knew I had some jeans and there was other options. I didn't know what piece was going to go where. Mm-hmm. So tech at first was like almost a disaster, but we did just do a quick change rehearsal. Good. The first night. Um, which wasn't even, it was like half of my changes, not even all of them. Wow. Yeah. And so, I mean, there was one change out of the pink serious dress into the juicy track suit. The pink okay. one. Yep. So they had me running off and I was supposed to come on behind the platform as the Delta News were walking out, which would have been like 15 seconds. The high heels are going to have to be quick rigged in some way, shape, form of fashion. Um, they actually had, like, little bathing suit hooks, like, on all my shoes, oh, the heels, and that, that's how we would put them on. Oh, that's mm-hmm. smart. Did um, you have dressers for the oh, show? Oh, yes. Good. So I started out with one dresser. Her name's Mariah, and me and her have worked on shows together in the past as costume dressers together. That's fun. And she's awesome, so nice, and poor girl was so stressed. She yeah. saw, like, my list of clothes and changes, and I told her, I was like, I am so sorry. Mm-hmm. And she was like, we got this. She was always so positive, which Good is exactly her. what I needed. Was like, we got this. You're never going to miss a cue. Like, we got this. Perfect. So we start, like, the first dress, and mm-hmm. people would come in and help her that weren't helping other people change. Because keep in mind, there was 800 pieces of clothing in the show, which insane. was insane. And a lot of other people had quit changes as well. It mm-hmm. wasn't just me. So other dressers are helping them. And so at first, other dressers would just come in and help Mariah if they could. And then a girl named Caroline, who also is a senior, and she's so dear and nice, went up to Joseph and was like, Mariah needs help. I would love to step in and help her. So I ended up having two dressers. That's great. Caroline did my bottom half. Mm -hmm. Mariah did my top half. (laughs) Great. The whole time. Mm -hmm. And they also were like my water people. I had like four water bottles stationed backstage because I never got to go down. I was Mm -hmm. always out of breath, trying not to look like a hot mess. Right. (laughs) So they were like chugging, forcing water down my throat, changing my clothes. But they helped so much. That's so wonderful. And like having a good team backstage. Yeah. And just like so supportive. Like Caroline even brought a fan and was like holding it in my face. I was like, y'all are the good best friend. ever. And like when I'm saying my butt was in their face, I was kneeing Caroline like every mm-hmm. night. I like wrote her a thank you <laughs> note at the end of the show. I was like so thankful for all of our memories. Yes. You seeing me naked every night, me kneeing you in the yep. face and our pre-show talks. <laughs> Absolutely. I was like, thank you so much. That's so great. And from what I've heard from everyone, Sarah Thomas, is this whole, like you've mentioned, the whole process, not only on stage, but everyone backstage, you know, have been so lovely. Mm-hmm. I think one thing that is so great and I think a reason that this show brought such joy Mm -hmm. is we we all have wanted it to happen for so long we all had a common goal right and everyone I think going into it everyone knew just how hard this show was because a bunch of us got a glimpse into oh my gosh this is not gonna be Mm -hmm. like Spring Awakening this is not gonna be like other shows that UA has done in the past like this is a big moving show right each scene is a different location and it's a very different location. You mm-hmm. go from Delta Nu to Harvard to blank stage, like right. all over the place. And the positivity that the cast brought into the show was so greatly appreciated. That's great. And now it's finally time mm-hmm. for the long awaited yes. show. Two weeks ago mm-hmm. on a Wednesday, and it was your first time walking on stage as Elle yeah. Woods in front of an audience. And what also, was it? Oh my gosh, this is incredible. Yeah. It was like the most surreal feeling. I was like, That's I so did exciting. something here. You um, did it. And yeah. did it stunning. Like, Thank you. so incredible. Insane, though, because mm-hmm. people were blown away by your talent, the talent of the entire cast. Yeah. The production. Stacey Alley was our director yeah. choreographer. And, you know, this show so well for the yeah. style that she does. Mm-hmm. Sharp, sophisticated, yeah. clean. It was just, it worked so wonderfully. It worked so well. I was there for probably, like, I think I missed one night. But every night I was there, the audience, Mm -hmm. cackling. Yes. Cheering, yelling. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything. And there was, I can't remember if it was the second weekend. I knew it was the second weekend, but Stacy said it was either Friday or Saturday. She was like, I've never heard the Galloway that loud. 
It was so exciting. It was so exciting and loud. Yes. And that just made us even more pumped up. And the show's hilarious. Oh, it's so funny. It's it's every emotion. Mm-hmm. You know, it's hilarious and you really empathize with everyone, mm-hmm. especially Al. You know, yeah. you learn. I mean, throughout the show, you fall in love with Al. Right. As someone came up to me after the show and I'd never met him before. He came up to me and was like, I just wanted to tell you what a great job you did. He said, from the moment that you turned around on stage, I felt like I could trust you. Mm. And you just had me in the palm of your hand. Mm-hmm. And that was, like, the most amazing thing to hear. Because, that's you know, wonderful. that's just such a goal. Like, yeah. you want people to be like, oh, wow, she's not going to mess up. She's mm-hmm. got it. Or, yeah. like, they, they know what they're doing. Absolutely. So for someone to, like, confirm and tell me that, like, that they trusted me meant so much. That's so great, ST. Mm-hmm. And... I hope you've heard it a thousand times. I'll tell you again. You were literally incredible. Thank you. So phenomenal on stage. And so the show is closed. Yes. And I'm sure you're going through a bit of a a post-Al Woods feeling. (laughs) So what are things from the show that you're going to take with you as Mm Al, as the show? I mean, this has been years in the making. Mm -hmm. And you've already talked a little bit about how it literally has changed your life, (laughs) you know, in physical ways. But what Mm -hmm. are things that you're going to carry with you? So for me, coming into college, I was super, I was confident. I was, I'm always, I've always been kind of insecure just because Mm -hmm. that's just, girls are just that way. Yes. Just the world we live in. But throughout my four years here, me not getting cast and stuff and me not being as well known as like some of my friends in the department I will say that like I feel like it took a toll on me and like Mm. my thought of like oh I'm good like Mm -hmm. I deserve to be here so for me like connecting with Elle I feel like in a way she's rubbed off on me to just be confident in who I am because I am that people look at me and they're like oh she's the blonde girl that's not super serious she's funny she's outgoing But I am a serious person, Mm -hmm. and I take what I do very seriously. And so I feel like her personality is rubbed off of me. Like, it's okay to be that way Mm -hmm. and just accept who you are because it might make other people laugh, but they'll love you for it. They'll love you for you. And also just her determination. Mm -hmm. She, when she has a goal in mind, she's not going to stop. And I feel like that is something that's so important to take out into the world, like, especially with what I'm about to go do, like, moving to New York and like pursuing the arts that I'm about to be shut down so many times and it's not because I'm not talented it's not because I might not be right or perfect for the role it just might be wrong time that kind of thing and so I feel like it's so important to take that determination Mm -hmm. into the world and be like you can do it don't stop now absolutely and what I love so much about Elle she is her own biggest cheerleader Mm -hmm. but she's also Everyone around her biggest cheerleader. Mm -hmm. And for me also, that rubbed off on me in a way as well. Because like one of my pre-show rituals, I can't sit in silence. Mm -hmm. Especially for a character like Elle. I'm like walking around. I'm making my laps. I'm talking to people. Oh, you look so beautiful tonight. Keep it up. Keep up the hard work. And so for me, actually also during the show, I forgot to mention this. I decided I was going to do one good deed a week because Elle's such a giving character. She is. She's a giving person. She wants everyone else happy. So I was like, I'm already, I love to give gifts. I'm just a caring person. I will ask you randomly, how is your day going? How is Mm -hmm. your life going? So I was like, one good deed a week, whether that was like volunteering or whether that was just writing someone a sweet note Mm -hmm. or like folding someone's laundry in the KD house that had left it in the dryer. I was just like, one good deed a week. I brought Abby Goldberg a jar of pickles one week. Stunning. I know she loved that. Oh, probably. loved it. Yes. Like a huge jar of pickles. <laughs> but I feel like that has like rubbed off on me as well. Like even after that, just my attitude, like my positivity has just like grown so much. And I've realized mm-hmm. like how silly it is to just get down or like be negative over just the smallest little things. So like doing those good deeds and like being positive helped me feel like I was doing something right like I was being a better person and I think it made me a better person that is so wonderful ST and you know the show impacts everyone so Mm -hmm. lovely and it was so great to hear how it impacted you and I know that you're going to take it with you forever and I know the audience and all of us involved are going to take this production because it was just so lovely and thank you so much for joining us today this was such a joy yes so much fun yes so wonderful and 
Thank you guys so much for joining us for this week's Stage Talks. My name is Leah May Aldridge, and make sure you follow us on social media at UA Theater and Dance to keep up with all new episodes of Stage Talks. Again, have a wonderful day.